Listen, yo, I roll up ready. Sky couple shots out the semi. Flex like machine gun Kelly. Military headgear, leather gloves ready. The debut album, Disaster Piece. Now, is it fair to say 15 years in the making? Or is it fair um, to say that? Do you know what? Practically, it's not 15 years in the making. <laughs> but really, it is because I put everything I've known even more than that, it's my whole life, like a lot of what I've learned, what I'm, what, what I'm into, my influences, the things I'm trying to influence, it's all gone into that album still. How does it feel to finally have it out? Because it's no, it's, no, it's no minor feat to put out an album because a lot of artists may be dodged that. They put out mixtapes, they put out EPs, they say the album's coming, it never comes out. <laughs> but you've actually said, this is my album. You could have said this was a mixtape or anything, but yeah. this is my album. Um, Again, I just felt like um, the music was strong, the music was consistent, and I went, I'm in a new solo zone where like, I enjoy making music by myself because, as you said, I'm from Roll Deep, and it was a whole different creative process when you're working in a group. So I just felt, yeah, man, this is my album. I don't even... I don't even like, sometimes when people say mixtape, um, I listen to the music and I'm like, but this is sick music, though. Mm -hmm could have called it your album. I think it's regardless of what the name is, it's just about what the music is on that CD. I just think when some people feel like they want to put out a lesser effort, I just think you're not really doing yourself any justice anyway, whether it's your mixtape or not. You should really be trying to go hard on every time you are doing music still. So do you remember the point in which you said, you know what, I'm ready to actually put my debut album out now. It's got to be called Disaster Piece. I'm ready. I'm working on a debut album. Do you remember that point? No, because it wasn't that. It wasn't really like that. I was working on um, an EP called, um, I put that out about two years ago, um, Serious Business, that that was called on um, Hype, Hyperdub. So I put, I put that out and um, that was like four tracks out of about seven that I was working on. So I just continued working. I'm sure I got some good feed, uh, feedback that gassed me up a little bit to think like, okay, then they're accepting the solo effort still. So continued working and then I got approached by a label didn't really know about the music, they just knew about my profile and they wanted to be involved. And when I showed them the music, where I was working onto at that point, they was like, yeah, we're gonna go with this. I was like, wait a minute, let, let me finish, let me add a few bits and so forth, and then ready to go. Disaster Piece is a very, um, it's a bold title, not only for just a debut album, like Disaster Piece. Like, I'm not expecting to hear any kind of sweet music I'm not expecting like no sing-alongs or anything. I'm, I'm expecting dark sounds. I'm expecting maybe anarchy. So why did you call the album Disaster Piece? What's the story behind it? Um, the story behind it is not really a story, but it's just a thought process. Because I was trying to find a name that is catchy, but has meaning and also can represent the mood of the album. And my mood. Um, and also metaphorically and like just wordplay. Like we all know that mas a masterpiece is the the ultimate thing you're trying to reach but I just thought okay then um, let me just try and be ori original and also have a different mood because it's not necessarily a masterpiece because everyone's going to have their own opinion of it but to me it's a disaster piece because disaster is usually creates newborn new life new stuff so are you that. saying maybe I can't play this on a Sunday afternoon to be to be honest <laughs> you can are you saying that I cannot play this when my mum comes around for dinner and I'm sitting around the to dinner be table? To be honest, I can. I, again, you can. You can play it to anyone, anywhere, because it's got some... I wouldn't say it's got something for everyone, but there's so, uh, sonically, it's not really abrasive and it's not really like... It's a professional-made piece of art. So the nieces and nephews around, like my daughter's like, oh yeah, you know, dad, put some music on. Like, maybe I can't put this on. What do you reckon? There's certain ones that you can't play <laughs> if it's for the younger people. There's certain ones you can't play. Like Bob Marley, don't play that. Um, horror show style, don't play that. Play something like Groundhog. They can learn something from that one. I have to ask you, was it easy for you to resist those pop temptations? Because Roll Deep had number ones, top 20s, like um, very accessible albums. Like people that might have known Roll Deep before the albums were released would maybe not have been expecting what they heard on the albums. And like when the albums came out, it was very accessible, very chart worthy, and you had the number ones. That like you must have been having some offers like, yeah, flow then why don't jump you on this one yeah um yo <laughs> there was some jump on this one there definitely was and you know it is for me again it's about vibes and if i can help the situation because a lot of the decisions that i made on the tunes are like right who's got the style that fits the song so if there was one that's got as a bit that needs me i was definitely open to suggestions but at the same time 
we all know when that song's done, if it weren't the one, you're not gonna hear it. Mm-hmm. So again, we make bare, there's bare, there's bare tunes that don't make, don't make the cut, and there's songs where you think, Shh, I'm glad that never made the cut. Mm-hmm. It's just work and it's just vibes. I don't take it that pers, that personal, but at the same time, it's what we do because I definitely do look back and think, whoa, did you really do that? That was mad. You get me? So I'm an honest person, so I can, yeah, I'm just glad that. Um, I know how to work and I know that the people around me know how to work as well so there's no decisions just made like oh shit you need to be on that because you need to get paid for this and so forth it doesn't work like that we kind of briefly spoke about it off mic before but um I sort of wondered um you know with the big singles like green light that went number one did you ever feel like I wanted to have a verse on that I wanted that exposure um, was there any any gripes or arguments no, within the, the nev- team? There's never no gripes, and because um, <laughs> you can't never gripe because we're a family and we've been making music before this, and we never knew it was gonna be this. So don't get excited and don't get bad mind. But at the same time, it works out well for everyone involved because all right, you're not on the songs, but you do go to the shows. And when you go to the show, you're not just performing that one song. There's other songs in the catalogue that need that need to be done. So if you want to talk about exposure, definitely got that. But being a stage show done, I know you want the forward though. The forward's <laughs> not important. I'm the stage show regulator in Roll in Roll Deep. I like I intro the show, I outro the show. I, I mean I I'm I'm the glue in that team regarding the songs and the structure of the show. Do you know what I mean? Me and Carnage will sit down and say, right, we're doing this song there, whether I'm on the song or not. Do you know what I mean? I'm planning the show, so... Nah, man. Stay show done is always the bat, bro. Try not you're surrounded by demons. I bet you're any money, somebody, you got sky. 